Welcome to Podocyte Talk. In today's episode, we're diving into three important studies that shed new light on kidney disease progression and transplantation outcomes. The first study explores how red blood cell casts impact disease progression in IgA nephropathy, a common kidney disorder characterized by inflammation and scarring. The study analyzed data from two cohorts, 425 patients in the Peking University First Hospital IgA nephropathy group and 279 patients in the testing trial. Researchers investigated whether the presence of red blood cell casts was linked to worsening kidney function. A red blood cell cast was considered present if at least one was found in the renal tubules under a microscope. The study's primary outcome was a decline in kidney function, the development of end-stage kidney disease, or death, due to kidney disease. Findings showed that 37% of patients in the first cohort and 28% in the second cohort had red blood cell casts. Patients with these casts had more active kidney inflammation, but fewer areas of scarring, compared to those without. Over a median follow-up of about 4.5 years, patients with red blood cell casts had better kidney outcomes, particularly if they received immunosuppressive treatment. In both cohorts, the presence of red blood cell casts was associated with a slower decline in kidney function, suggesting a potential role in disease management. This study highlights that red blood cell casts may serve as an important marker in predicting kidney disease progression in IgA nephropathy. Their presence, especially in patients receiving immunosuppressive therapy, could indicate a more favorable prognosis. Our next study examines the impact of kidney transplantation on survival in patients with lupus nephritis who develop end-stage kidney disease. Lupus nephritis is a severe complication of systemic lupus erythematosus and linked to high morbidity and mortality. While kidney transplantation is considered the best treatment for end-stage kidney disease, its survival benefits in lupus nephritis patients have not been well established. Researchers analyzed data from a national kidney registry in France, including 882 patients with lupus nephritis who had end-stage kidney disease. Of these, 636 patients were placed on a kidney transplant wait list and 470 eventually received a transplant. The study followed patients for a median of about 6.5 years after waitlisting to assess survival outcomes. The results showed that kidney transplantation significantly improved survival. Patients who received a transplant had a 60% lower risk of death compared to those who remained on dialysis. After 10 years, 83% of transplant recipients were still alive, compared to 60% of those who had not received a transplant. These benefits were consistent across different patient groups. Additionally, the probability of graft failure within 10 years was 23%. This study emphasizes the importance of early evaluation and timely referral for kidney transplantation in patients with lupus nephritis. Ensuring that eligible patients are assessed for transplantation could lead to better long-term outcomes and improved survival rates. Our final study explores thrombotic microangiopathy, a condition marked by small vessel thrombosis due to endothelial injury, which poses significant challenges in kidney transplantation. Researchers conducted a retrospective study of 3,535 kidney transplant recipients over a 15-year period to identify factors associated with post-transplant thrombotic microangiopathy. Of the patients studied, 68 were diagnosed with thrombotic microangiopathy and 93% underwent genetic testing. The patients were classified into three groups based on the cause of their condition. The first group, representing 62% of cases, had complement-mediated thrombotic microangiopathy linked to genetic or acquired abnormalities. These patients were younger and had a higher incidence of hypertension or preeclampsia as a cause of kidney failure. One-third of them experienced recurrent thrombotic microangiopathy, and nearly 78% of those with recurrent disease lost their transplant. The second group, comprising 21% of cases, developed thrombotic microangiopathy due to calcineurin inhibitors or ischemic injury. These patients had longer cold ischemia times and a higher rate of delayed graft function compared to controls. The third group, which included 17% of cases, had thrombotic microangiopathy associated with infections or autoimmune disorders and showed poor response to anti-complement therapy. The findings highlight the importance of genetic testing before 
and after kidney transplantation to predict and manage thrombotic microangiopathy risk. The study also suggests that calcineurin inhibitors may increase the risk of thrombotic microangiopathy when other complement activating factors are present. Personalized treatment strategies and early intervention may help prevent transplant loss in affected patients. Join us on Podocyte Talk as we continue to bring you the latest insights into kidney disease research and treatment. Check the description for links to the studies discussed in this episode and stay tuned for more insights into kidney disease research and clinical innovations. Tune in now to stay informed.